Good morning, beloveds. It's been an exciting weekend, and yet I've gotten rest, so that's a good thing. Friday night, I got to watch uh, Reverend Anna's ordination, and after watching it, I'm like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> All right, then. Um, and then uh, last night, I, or yesterday afternoon, I saw a random post. A friend of mine said, hey, I'm going to be at 403 Eats, singing live, come out. And... Um, so I texted my husband because we had had that whole conversation about what are we going to have for dinner? So I texted him and said, hey, want to go want to go hear Jared La uh, sing at 403 Eats, which what 403 Eats is, is it's a food truck park. Literally, I think there were it's like six food trucks um, and he was singing. And so we showed up. We walked all the food trucks. We listened to him sing while we walked the food trucks. Uh, we picked something to eat. Uh, and I believe that the food truck that we picked, they may have been from uh, Romania because <laughs> the name of the food truck was Dracula, <laughs> Dracula something. Um, but it, uh, they made paninis, but they used this really cool um, bread, that a dough that they make that's not like anything I've ever had before. And it was really good. Uh, we had an ultimate grilled cheese and a brisket and cheese and then they also did sausage and then they make they call they're called chimney cakes i've heard of them once i've never seen them and now i've seen them uh we opted to not eat those because it was like okay i've had enough bread <laughs> um we didn't try the chimney cakes but ch chimney cakes but now we have an excuse to go back but the sausage that we got was wrapped the same way the chimney cakes are made although and so it may have been the same dough they just probably put a lot of sugar on the chimney cakes I don't know. It was really cool though. Um, so, uh, it was good fun though. And Jared sounded amazing and we stayed for as long as we could. And then, you know, he got, he was going to be able to sing for a little bit more, but we had to come home, um, because we have an elderly man who we try not to break his routine too much. Um, when we, uh, cause you know, he's elderly and he does better with routine. So we try not to disturb it any more than we have to. So it's a good weekend. And now we get to go to church on Sunday. But first we get to do this. So we are closing in on the end of March. We are closing in on the end of March. So it is March 27th. Our title is I experience the wholeness of God. And our quote is for we know in part and we prophecy in part. But when that is, that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And that is 1 Corinthians 13, 9 and 10. <clears throat> okay. How true it is that we do see as the, through a glass darkly or only in part. But to all of us, there come fleeting moments when our inward vision is opened and we seem to look out upon a newer and broader horizon. The apostle tells us that when that which is perfect shall come, then that which is in part shall be done away. What he is really saying is that when we are all at a certain place in our evolution, then that which is a complete certainty before us. but that there is a complete certainty before us. We shall continuously expand and experience more and more of that life, which is already perfect, but there is no reason why this awakening shall not come now. For we are not really waiting on God. God is waiting on us. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. All nature wants our recognition and even the divine spirit must wait our cooperation with it. Today, my eyes are open more widely, and I look out upon a broader horizon. Across all the experiences I may have had, which are limited or unpleasant, I now see the rosy hue of a new dawn. Letting go of that which is little, I now enter into a larger concept of life. Dropping all fear, I enter faith. I entertain faith realizing that from every form of uncertainty 
is seeing only in part. I see, no, I open my spiritual eyes to that which is wholeness. And even as I do this, the limitation and the fear and the, the doubt slip away from my experience. Taking their departure in the quietness and in peace, as I turn to that which is greater and better and fuller of eternal life, of happiness of, and of peace. Today, my eyes are open to the breadth and the height and the depth of that which of that life, which is God, that life, which is good and the law, which is perfect. Woof. <laughs> that is all I'm going to say. Okay. So there are two things that jump out at me in this one. First thing, um, actually, I'm going to do the second thing first. Then I'm going to go back to the first thing. First, th second thing is that he said that God's not, that, that we are not waiting on God. Okay. That God is waiting on us at any time. God is prepared to give us exactly what we ask for <clears throat> the lies too, but what God is waiting on is our acceptance. God is waiting on us, on us to ask for it because when we ask for it, it means that we are willing to accept it um, because God can only do for us what God can do through us. So God has to wait on us to do it. So there's never a time that God is going to say, wait a minute, <laughs> God is waiting on us, not the other way around. The and then, so let's go back to the first thing. Um, and that's one of those things where I read the Bible quote and kind of, I stopped and I was like, no, I'm going to wait. Okay. So when I was in, um, one of Reverend Norm's class classes and Reverend Norm is a, an amazing teacher. He's an amazing teacher. And what he did for what, what he did was he told me, all right, so, um, when you're reading Bible classic, when you're reading Bible quotes, one of the biggest mistakes that we make is we take them out of context. So if you want to know what 1 Corinthians 13, 10, 3, chapter 13, 9 and 10 are really about, go read the chapter. Okay. Read the lines before, read the lines after, see what he's talking about. All right. Because taking it out of context can give it a completely different meaning. But based on what Ernest says, what I think he's talking about is the mystical experience. Okay. And because he's talking about, and he gets into it about our, that the fleeting moments when our vision opens up and the cool thing about mystical experiences is once you've had one, one, you tend to have more than just one. Uh, cause once you've got the first one, it's like the, the, the dam has been broken. All right. And so now they'll come and they'll come in interesting ways and they're, they're, they're impossible to explain to people who haven't had one. And even when you're trying to explain a mystical experience to somebody who hasn't had one, there are no words to explain them. You can get, you know, <clears throat> it kind of sounds like what we like to call word salad because there aren't words that can explain it. Now, if somebody's had a mystical experience, they know what you're talking about. They're like, ah, you've had a mystical experience, even if you can't explain it. And you're never, ever the same again, ever. Once you have glimpsed that, once you have seen the bigger reality, and even then you're not, you're, you're still only seeing a part of it. But once you've seen the bigger reality, you can't ever go back to your small one. You can't ever go back. Um, <clears throat> it stays with you. So you, for, for the rest of your life, you know that there's something more out there. There's something bigger out there. And why do I know this? Because I've had a few <clears throat> and I can't explain. Them. I have had the universe unfurl in front of me. It rolled up and rolled back and rolled out. And, and for a moment I was stunned and then it rolled back up and came back in. And I still can't explain that experience. I have had the experience where I was held down and light was poured into me. 
And once you go through, once you have an experience like that, you look at the world differently. You move through the world differently because you know that there's something bigger. It changes you. It changes you, which is the point of them, which is the point of them. And I've had them in interesting spaces. Like one time, one of the ones I was literally sitting in the center, listening to Jesse talk about something and it happened. And I just went, and another time I had been at, uh, this, uh, I had been at a, um, I don't even, I was in a sacred circle. There had been drumming. There were no drugs. <laughs> I've never needed that. Um, you know, but the, you know, I'm not saying that they're bad because the, the native Americans use that. And if you're going to do that kind of stuff, just make sure you're with a practitioner who knows what they're doing. Okay. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, if you're going to do that, go and do it with a practitioner who knows what they are doing. Um, because, you know, like I said, all of mine have been in, in, in places where that wasn't necessary. So it's possible. And it's just once you have that experience and it opens you up to new ones. And then you have those moments, those stunning moments when you're up and you're going, oh, and it's just the bird singing because you hear something that you hadn't heard before. So that's, that's, you know, I, I don't even, I don't even know how to explain a mystical experience. And that's the problem with mystical experiences. You can't. Okay. So. March 27th, I experienced the wholeness of God. All right. So for we know in part, we know in part and we prophecy in part and prophecy uh, is when that's a gift from God and that that's part of the mystical experience. Okay. Uh, but when that which is perfect is come and then that which is in part shall be done away because your horizon will have been expanded and you can't go back to playing small. You can't go back to playing small. So, uh, the, and that, so that's first Corinthians, 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 first Corinthians, uh, chapter 13 lines nine and 10. Go read the whole chapter. <clears throat> All right. How true it is that we do see through as through a glass darkly or only in part. I didn't realize that was a Bible quote. Jesse's quoted it at me before. And I was like, and then I actually found the Bible quote and went, Oh, Oh, okay. In the material world, we are limited and we are limited by the material world. And this is a choice that we made to come here. Okay. But to all of us, there comes a fleeting moment when our inward vision is opened and we seem to look out upon a newer and broader horizon. Now, you notice he said, but to all of us, there come. Every single one of us is, it's possible for us to have those experiences, to see a little bit more than we did before. It's built into us by virtue of where we come from, by what we're made of, by what animates us. And we don't need anything to do it other than the willingness to pay attention. All right. The apostle tells us that when that which is perfect, which means whole, shall come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Your life, that's what's going to happen. Your life is going to change. It can't help it. What he is really saying is that we are all at a certain place in our evolution, but there is a complete certainty before us. We're here now doing this, but there's more to come. There's more to come. We shall continuously expand and experience more and more of that light, which is already perfect. It's already whole, but there is no reason why this awakening shall not come now. You can have that mystical experience right here, right now, or you can have that mystical awakening right here, right now. 
for we are not really waiting on God. God is waiting on us. All right. We came here to learn. I mean, this is the ultimate lab experience, right? Material life is the ultimate lab experience that we've experienced up to now that we know about. Maybe there's more. We don't know. But God is waiting on us. And once we are ready and open and willing to have those mystical experiences, and we can have them all the time. We can have that mystical awakening. Behold, and this is a quote, behold, I stand at the door and knock. All right. That's why we do this work. We stand at the door, door and knock. That's the point of spiritual practice. This point of the spiritual practice is to stand at the door and knock and say, I am willing. I am open. I am ready. All nature awaits our recognition and even the divine spirit must wait our cooperation with it. All right. God can't make us. God gave us free will. God can't make us. Therefore, God waits on us. That's why we have to ask. All right. So treatment, power statement, um, affirmations. If any of the words don't resonate with you, feel free to change them until they do. Although Ernest is really good. So every now and again, you'll watch me because you watch me gender neutral all the time. I don't agree with that, but um, most of the time, his, he, the way he phrased these are, is so good. So good. Today, my eyes are open more widely and I look out upon a broader horizon. I across all the experiences I may have had, which were limited or unpleasant. So he acknowledges that life isn't always great. It's like, yeah, life can be messy and juicy and, you know, sometimes we got to clean it up. But once our eyes are opened, I now see the rosy hue of a new dawn. Yeah, it's been messy, but I have the power to change that in my own life. Letting go of that which is little, I now enter into a larger concept of life. Dropping all fear, I entertain faith, realizing that every form of uncertainty is seeing only in part. Okay, every form of uncertainty is seeing only in part. When we see all of the steps, we have no problem getting up there. All right. No problem taking the stairs when we can see the goal. All right. When we know, you know, there's no uncertainty. It's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And this is what's going to happen. We have no uncertainty. Okay. I open my spiritual eyes to that which is wholeness. Sometimes we got to trust. I think it's a quote from Martin Luther. Um, you know, even if you can't see the whole staircase, you got to take the first step. And even as I do this, the limitation, the fear and the doubt slip away from my experience, taking their departure in quietness and in peace as I turn to that which is greater and better and fuller of eternal life, of happiness and of peace. All right. So when we turn to God, it, 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 it's the fear and the doubt and that uncertainty slip away. They just go. I turn my, today, my eyes are open to the breadth and the height and the depth of that life, which is God, that life, which is good and the law, which is perfect. All right. So I turn my eyes to a bigger experience. I stop living small. Stop living small. Because we were made for bigger things. We were made for bigger. Stop living small. Do what it is in your heart to do. All right. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it? <laughs> is to turn to that which is greater and better and fuller of eternal life, of happiness and peace. 
to turn to God, to turn to spirit, to stop living small, to recognize that this is part and that there is more. All right, beloveds. That's the mission. The mission is to turn to God. Always. To turn to spirit. To recognize who we are. To recognize where we come from. To recognize that we are beloved, beloved children of God. To recognize that that mystical experience, that mystical is awakening, is merely waiting on us. And our willingness to accept it. So, all right. I'm going to move into the process of my day, but I'm going to recommend the spiritual practice because as I said, the, the point of spiritual practice is to see that broader horizon, to see that depth. Um, it's not necessarily about chasing that mystical experience, but it is about opening and being willing for it to happen. So the spiritual practice that I always recommend is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like, whatever that looks like be it big, be it small. It doesn't matter. Three deep breaths. Go for a walk, take a nap, sit down and actually enjoy something. Don't rush through that cup of coffee, but sit down and savor it. Um, feel, feel, use all five of your senses on that cup of coffee or that food or whatever it is that you are doing. Enjoy your moment. That is a spiritual practice. And practicing love, kindness, and compassion on yourself is important. And it is important for a number of reasons. One of them being you deserve your own love, your own kindness, your own compassion. And if you practice on yourself, you create a habit. You create a default setting. You create a first response. And if you can respond to no anything that happens around you with love, kindness, and compassion, you are well on your way to making a world that works for everybody. All right, because if you can practice it on yourself, you can do it for anybody. Trust me on this. All right, beloveds. Um, as always, I do suggest do something to engage your mind and your body. As it is your day of rest, because everybody needs one. Um, go get some bright sunlight early. Uh, it will reset your hormones and help you have more energy through the day and sleep better at night. Drink plenty of water. Always hydration is super important. We're about 80% water. So, you know, and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around us. As he pointed out today, when we are open to it, when we recognize the good around us, when we look at the good around us and praise it, then we broaden our horizons. We see more of the wholeness of God. Today was about experiencing the wholeness of God. And how do we do that? By being open, being willing, opening our souls, allowing that breath of heaven to remind us. It's all around us all the time so that we can see that rosier hue. All right, beloveds. We are going to have an amazing service for you right here on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. Or if you're watching this later, you can catch, scroll back, scroll a video forward or catch us on YouTube. We are on the social medias. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center or Creative Life Spark. And we are on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. So find us, like us, and share us. Um, I'm the Running Rev on, Running Rev Ryan on three of those. So um, yeah, there we are uh, if you need us. And I work really hard to sort playlists so that you can find anything that you're looking for on both of the YouTubes, okay? Um, on the Creative Life YouTube, I cross-pollinate. So like if you're looking for a guest speaker, they could be in the month that they were in, they're in guest speaker. Or if there's somebody we've had on the stage regularly, um, then they will be, they'll have their own playlist. So check out the playlist. On the Running Rev Ryan, they're archived by month and year uh, and book. So you can find them. Okay. I'm going to tell you to have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, an enchanting day, a fantastic day, a restful day, a sun day, a spiritual day, an enchanting day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always. 
and forever. All right. Take care of yourself. Reverend David should be on with you around 5 p.m. I will be back with you uh, at 9 a.m. tomorrow. But between now and then, we got a great service for us for you. So check us out at 11 Central and I'll see you next time. All right, beloveds, know that you're loved. <laughs>